Hi, I'm Jason. Today I'd like to walk you through making your very first screen recording video within Camtasia. Let's start with the capture window. When looking at the Camtasia recorder, it's best to ask yourself three simple questions. What do you want people to be able to see? Can they see you? And can they hear you? First, let's start with what do you want people to be able to see? From the left side of the recorder, you can select the area you'd like to record, whether it be full screen or something smaller than that. The options are available to you here underneath this drop down menu, where you can choose different full screen and widescreen options. Today, we're going to just record full screen for this example. Camtasia can also record your webcam while you're recording. If you'd like to toggle on your webcam, simply click this button here and Camtasia will look for the cameras that you have plugged into your screen. Hovering your mouse over will give you a little bit of a preview to see what the camera looks like. For today's example, we're not gonna worry about the webcam, so we'll toggle it off here. And thirdly, do you want people to be able to hear you? Arguably, it's a very important part of your video, so making sure your microphone is turned on by having this green check mark is crucial. You can also see if your voice is being picked up by looking at the audio meter here to see if you are getting input levels. Now, we always recommend if you have a USB microphone available to you to use that because it'll give you a higher quality audio result. However, whatever microphone you have available to you is the best one that you can use right now. Now, before you hit the red record button, I recommend getting what you want to record up on your screen. For us, we're gonna record a simple web interface. This is a mock website that we're gonna use for our recording. Now, we're gonna record full screen as we mentioned before, so you should see a dotted green line around the outside of your screen. That's gonna show you the recording area for Camtasia. When you're ready, click the red record button to begin your process. If it's a process that you're familiar with, you may be okay with just hitting the red record button and talking through your process. If you're like me, it may be helpful to have a small list of notes, even on post-it notes, to give you guidance as to what you're gonna talk about. Let's give our sample recording a try right now. When I hit the red record button, Camtasia is gonna give me a three, two, one countdown. And then everything I say and everything I do after the fact will be captured by Camtasia. When I'm ready to stop recording, I can simply hit the F10 key to stop recording and bring it into the editor. Let's start our recording. Hello, let's walk through adding a person to our process tracking board. At the top of the screen, we're gonna click on the plus button and we're going to add a contributor by clicking the plus button here. We'll add in the name and their email and then we'll select their role, which for today will be follower. When we're ready, click the add button the new member will show up here at the bottom. We just need to enable them by clicking on this button here. And then when we hit close, our new contributor will be at the top of the screen as a member of the board. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Once we hit the F10 key, we will see that our recording has been brought here into the Camtasia editor. The Camtasia editor is broken up into four major parts the media bin library tool area over on the left, your canvas here in the middle, the properties panel on the right, and your timeline here at the bottom. Let's look at each part individually. The media bin is where you're gonna keep content that's gonna be used for this particular recording. For our case, we only have one piece of media in here, which is the screen recording we just captured. The library is where you're gonna keep content that you may wanna use across multiple projects. This is also a place where Camtasia has preloaded royalty-free assets for you to use in your recordings, such as icons, animated introductions and lower thirds, motion backgrounds, music, and more. The motion backgrounds are great for adding a pop of polish to your video, while the outros, lower thirds, and intros can all be customized using the properties drawer. You also have the ability to favorite tools here, such as tools within the annotation area, transitions, behaviors, animations, and more. The canvas is where you're gonna see a preview of your video as you create it. 
It's going to show you the media that you have in your media bin that's been added to the timeline and acts as kind of a preview window as you play through your video. In fact, right below the canvas is a play button that you can click on to watch back your video as it was being recorded and as you make edits to it. Over on the right hand side, you see the properties panel where the options change dynamically depending on the type of media you have selected. For example, if I click off this area and click on the recording that we just did, I see that I have a couple of tabs here across the top of things that I can change about my media. Everything from the size to some editing of the audio and the ability to change and resize the cursor. The properties panel will change dynamically based on the tool that you have selected. And we'll see that a little bit later when we add some annotations to our video. Last but certainly not least, here at the bottom, we have your timeline. The timeline is exactly that. It has the playhead, and it's where the media is going to be located for you to create your video. The playhead starts here at the left and goes along your entire recording as the video was being captured and as your edits are made. The video will end when the playhead gets to the end of the media and there's nothing left on the timeline to utilize. We will actually use the timeline and the canvas to do some of our edits today. First thing first, let's save our project. If you notice at the top of the screen, right above the canvas, it says TechSmith Camtasia Untitled Project. Well, we wanna save our project so that we can come back into it and edit it later, or so that we can hand it off to someone else in case more than one person is gonna be working on this video. To save the project, we simply go to File, Save, and give it a name. Once we've saved it, Camtasia lets us know that this particular file, this TSC proj file or TechSmith project file can only be opened by Camtasia. And the new name of our project is located up here at the top of our screen. Next, let's take a quick look at our timeline. You'll notice that there are two tracks here on our timeline. Track one is our screen recording. This was what was captured on our screen earlier. And we have our audio track which is all of my spoken word that I use to describe the action of which was happening on the screen. What I like to do first and foremost is what I call wholesale cuts. These are cuts to my video, perhaps removal of errors, possible load screen times, just anything that's gonna help tighten up our video. If we look underneath the canvas over here to the right, we will see that our video is currently 48 seconds long. Well, once we're done with a few cuts, we'll be able to see that that time has lowered. So. First, I'm gonna take my playhead and notice that here on my timeline, there is an area at the beginning of the video where there's no audio that's been recorded. And I can tell that because there's no audio wave files being drawn. It's just kind of quiet. And that was us playing our video and seeing what was ready to go. Let's play back our video and see how it starts out. Hello, let's walk through adding a person to our process tracking board. Okay, so what that has shown us is that that area at the beginning is blank, meaning there was no speaking done and there's no action that's happening on the screen. So we can probably cut a good section of that out. Here's the easiest way to do it. If you notice on our playhead down here on the timeline, there's a green tab and a red tab. That's actually the selection tool within Camtasia and it lets us make really precise cuts and edits. To use a selection tool, you simply click on one of the tabs, either the red or the green. In this case, I'm going to click on the green to drag it to the left, and I'm going to make a selection of my video. And the area that I'm selecting is where I didn't do any speaking whatsoever. When I've made that selection, I'm going to simply hit the scissors button, which provides a cut action. And when I cut it, it removes that part of the video completely. And if we look over here to our timeline, right above it, we'll see that the time has changed from 48 seconds down to 45, meaning we've cut three seconds of video off of our video, which was not needed. So to complete those wholesale cuts, I can go through with my playhead and find sections of the video where I can cut sections out. For example, here's a section at the end, which can easily be removed because there's no speaking going on and no action on the screen. Once I make those wholesale cuts, I start making edits to take my video to a more polished state. Something as simple as adding intro and outro transitions can be a powerful way to polish your video up. 
Here within Camtasia, we have a series of transitions built in and they're easy to add. First, we'll click on the transitions button and we'll select the transition that best suits our video. For me, I'm gonna use the fade transition. To add it to my video, I simply click on it, and drag it down to the media, and you'll notice as I drag down, there's a yellow space on the left side and the right side of my media. That shows where this particular transition would be applied. If I drag it to the left, it'll turn green and create a fade in. If I drag it to the right, it'll create a green area that's going to fade out, but I want it to fade in and out. So in order to have that happen, I simply drag the transition down to the middle of the media, let go, and now both a fade in and a fade out action has occurred. And I can check that by bringing my playhead back to the beginning of the video and hitting play. Hello, let's walk through a beautiful fade in. And then if we place the playhead at the end, we will see it fade out. And thanks for watching. So just like that, we made a couple of quick edits that add a little bit of polish to your video with very limited effort. The next thing I typically do is utilize Camtasia's cursor effects, specifically our cursor smoothing effect. That takes a jagged movement on the screen by the cursor, or for someone like me who talks with their hands, and smooths out that action with one simple movement. To apply cursor smoothing to this video, I simply click on it, drag it down onto that same screen recording, and now my cursor will have a nice smooth effect to it. Next, let's use some callouts to draw attention to certain parts of our screen. In the video, there's a portion when I click on the plus button in the upper part of the screen and then bring it down to where we're going to add another plus button to add a managing member of the page. So let's place the playhead where I start talking about clicking on the plus button to add someone in. I believe it's right here. At the top of the screen, we're gonna click on the plus button. Okay, so at the top of the screen, we're gonna click on the plus button. Let's do something really helpful for us. And that is right above the timeline, there is a magnifying glass button. If I click on that button, it's actually gonna take the timeline and give all the viewable area available to me for my entire project. Meaning I can see the beginning of the project all the way to the end at the right hand side. That also gives a little bit more detail on the timeline so we can make very, very precision movements by placing things on the timeline without having to guess where things are. So let's go into our tool set and we're gonna go over to annotations and we're gonna add something simple. We're gonna add this red arrow to our video. When I click on the arrow and drag it onto the canvas and place it where I'd like to be, I can do a couple things with it right away. First, what I want you to notice is while we've added this to our screen, the properties drawer on the right hand side has changed where we can control colors, sizing, text, you name it. The properties panel always changes dynamically based on the type of media that you have selected. So for us, let's make some simple changes. One, um, I don't think I need any text on this particular callout. So I'm gonna double click in that area and just hit delete on my keyboard to remove that text. Next, uh, this arrow is comically oversized for me. So I'm just gonna use these adjustment handles and resize it to the point where I think I'm happy with it. And then I'm simply going to position it on the screen where I want it pointing. In this case, we're talking about this plus arrowed area. Now, I'd like you to notice something. At the bottom of the screen here on our timeline, when I dragged the arrow onto the canvas, this callout appeared on the track, track number three in this case. This is where the arrow is going to show up on our video. Now, because it's a piece of media, in this case, it's a still image of an arrow, it can be adjusted as well. I can reposition it by dragging it left or right, putting it wherever I need it, as well as lengthening the time it's on the screen or shortening it by dragging on either end of the callout to make changes to its duration. That's gonna be really helpful to us because we're actually going to animate this arrow to come in and move around for us. Don't worry, animations are pretty easy to do. First, let's have this arrow fade in on the screen and we can have it fade in the same way we had our screen recording fade in by going up to the transitions, choosing fade and clicking and dragging it down here onto the callout. And remember, dragging it to the middle gives us both a fade in and a fade out action. So now let's play this video back and see how that arrow shows up on our screen. At the top of the screen, we're gonna click on the plus button. 
and we're going to add a contributor. But okay, so we had it fade in nice and neat. And then we're actually talking about this plus button down here at the bottom of this area. So what I would like to have done is I'd like this same arrow to move from here down to this plus button. Well, I need to extend how long the arrow's on the screen. So I'm gonna come down to my timeline and I'm going to simply drag the arrow out a little longer. And to animate that arrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom animation. First, we're gonna place the playhead exactly where we want the animation to end, which is right here. I want it pointing at that plus button at the same time that my mouse gets there. To add an animation, we come up to the animations tool and we're going to click on the tab at the top for our Windows users called animations. And there's lots of pre-built animations in here, but I'm gonna teach you right now how to use the custom animation. To apply a custom animation, we click and drag it down onto the timeline and it will actually form this arrow on the piece of media. I'm gonna drag the arrow so that the head of the arrow hits the playhead right where I want the animation to stop. So the way animations work in Camtasia is this. When the playhead hits the tail of the arrow, the animation begins. And then as the playhead goes along the body of the arrow, the animation happens and then it ends right at the head of the arrow. What's neat about animations is you can actually change how fast or slow they happen by clicking on either end of the arrow and dragging that animation out or shortening it up. Now, to get that arrow in a position we want it to be, we simply double click on the head of the arrow. So it snaps the playhead right there, right to the end of that animation. We come up to the canvas and we simply click on our arrow here, the call out, and drag it into the position we'd like it to be in. In this case, we were having it move from here down to this plus button. And as we come down to the timeline and drag the playhead back across that animation, you'll actually see the arrow move up on the screen because we've created an animation that tells Camtasia at this point, we'd like you to start moving the arrow and slide it down to this plus button. So let's play that entire arrow sequence out by moving the playhead ahead of the call out itself and hitting play. At the top of the screen, we're gonna click on the plus button and we're going to add a contributor by clicking the plus button here. We'll add in the... So what we see now is it did the animation just like we liked and uh, I'd actually like the arrow to fade out a little bit before this add a new member screen pops up. So I'm gonna bring my playhead right to the point where it stops right before it shows up. Yep. And then I'm gonna take the uh, media here down on the timeline. I'm gonna click and drag the end of it back here so that it lines up with right at the moment where the playhead is. So that when I play this back, the arrow will drop down. And then right before that screen pops up, the arrow will have faded out and I can move on with the rest of my video. So you can actually do this sort of action with many different types of annotation tools here in Camtasia. Everything from standard callouts, which are shapes with text, to arrows, to basic shapes. You have blur tools across the top as well as highlighting and spotlights. You even have sketch motion callouts that look like they're being drawn on the screen as well as the ability to capture keystroke callouts. So in case you're showing someone how to do something with keyboard shortcuts, you can do those as well. So you can do a series of other animations and other callouts, but let's pretend for right now that we're done with this video. When you're done with it, you wanna share it outside of Camtasia so others can view it. Remember, right now it's in this TSC proj files format, which means the only thing that can open it is Camtasia. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save it out to a format that anyone can view. To share your video outside of Camtasia, you're gonna click on the share button in the upper right hand corner. And when you do that, you have several different options available to you. Saving it as a local file, a couple of cloud destinations like TechSmithScreencast.com or Video Review. You've got Vimeo, YouTube, Google Drive, and more. For our example today, we're gonna to save it as a local file and since the dimensions of the video are 1280 by 720, we're actually going to use this drop down menu and produce a 720p MP4. We choose MP4s because those are the most ubiquitous playback formats, which means most devices should be able to watch it without any problem. So we'll click on that, choose next. We can name the video whatever we'd like, 
However, Camtasia always takes the name from the current project name as it is, which for us is just my first video. And then we can locate wherever we want to save it. And for us, we're just going to put it on our desktop today. And we hit save. And when we're ready, we click finish. And Camtasia begins to render out our project. Now, the time it takes to render depends on your speed of your computer, length of the video, and a few other things. But once it hits 100%, we can go right to our desktop or wherever we save that video. And we will see my first video. Hello. Let's walk through adding a person to our process tracking board. At the top of the screen, we're going to click on the plus button. And we're going to add a contributor by clicking the plus button here. As you can see, we were easily able to watch our video and see some of those wonderful edits that we made. I hope you found this useful. Remember, you can always learn lots more about Camtasia or any other product that TechSmith makes by visiting us at our webpage at techsmith.com tutorial. Good luck and enjoy making your first videos with Camtasia.